Snowflake has been all the hype in the data news world. Investors seem to love it, companies are pushing for it, but you find yourself in a meeting with executives claiming it will magically solve all your data problems. What do you do? Let's look at what Snowflake is, what it isn't, and most importantly, what people like about switching to it. Snowflake has made a big splash, mostly because of the tech, which we'll get to, but also because of the strong value of its stock. A big reason for this is because of the investment support of Salesforce, who is allied with Snowflake, which along with their acquisition of Tableau, puts them in a good position to provide a complete data solution. Snowflake's role in the ecosystem is as a cloud data warehouse platform, competing with the likes of Google BigQuery, AWS Redshift, and Azure Synapse. Unlike those which are integrated with their respective cloud platforms, Snowflake is platform agnostic and can operate on any cloud infrastructure. The goal of Snowflake is a streamlined, simple data warehouse solution that is easy to set up, operate, and doesn't make its users jump through hoops trying to do things that shouldn't be difficult. So while a solution like Hadoop may need an entire team of infrastructure experts just to run it, Snowflake is designed to be handled by a small team with SQL experience. It accomplishes this with no virtual or physical hardware to manage, no software to install and keep updated, it's designed as a hybrid of traditional shared disk database and shared nothing database architectures. It uses a central repository that is accessible from compute nodes of persistent data, while also processing queries using massive parallel processing compute clusters to store portions of data locally. The benefit is separating out the compute resources and the storage resources, allowing users to scale up and down either storage resources or compute resources depending on their needs. If you have intense bulk processing nightly, then you can scale up for that and then scale down when it's no longer needed. If you have a need for cold data stores that you don't access very often, you can scale up your storage resources while keeping your compute resources low. This is done with auto scaling, which will automatically start and stop clusters to maximize flexibility and minimize administration. There are a few areas where Snowflake doesn't try to cover as it's not a complete analytics platform. Specifically, it does not focus on ETL functions, Snowpipe is available for detecting new data and loading it into Snowflake, but it's not designed for transformation as that's expected to be done once it's loaded, making it great for ELT designs. But if you have reasons for ETL and use other tools for that, you'll need to retain those tools. Also, it's not a complete data lake platform. File storage will need to be done on another cloud platform, but from there, Snowflake is designed to query the data stored in your data lake of choice. That brings us to integrations. Since it was designed to do data warehousing well, but they knew it wouldn't be a complete cloud platform, they knew they had to easily integrate with all the major cloud platforms and data tools. It's cloud agnostic, meaning it gives the same user experience no matter which cloud platform it's tied to. In addition to its native integrations, including Python, it provides options via its web UI, command line clients, ODBC and JDBC drivers, ETL apps like Informatica and BI tools making it easy to work with any existing architectures. So what specifically are people loving about Snowflake? A lot of it is just quality of life improvements over traditional database management platforms. If you've ever set up permissions and had to go back and forth with the users to see if they can access the object they want, Snowflake just lets you switch to the role and test their access. If you need to add email or SMS notifications, you just fill in the email and enable it. There's no need to go into another monitoring application tying that to your database or doing any other SMTP infrastructure work. It retains a time history for 90 days, giving the awesome command of undrop table, making many would-be disasters an easy fix. If you need a procedure to run on a schedule, there's a built-in scheduler, just write a SQL command to enable the task. There's no SQL agent, cron, data factory, or other schedulers to deal with. Since it doesn't support indexes or partitioning, there's no need for manually tuning the database. It's just handled by the compute processors. It handles both structured and semi-structured data as if it's the same. There's no need for two processes to handle them separately. The variant data type can handle both and automatically parses the data attributes. Dev and QA environments don't need to be duplicate databases. Test environments can be spun up as needed, pointed at the storage, and then run tests before moving code to production, which allows for DevOps practices closer to modern app development. Data sharing allows giving access to vendors, partners, and customers as needed, replacing the need for FTP in a simple, secure process. While other DBMSs may have some of these features, Snowflake seems to be prioritizing user experience, which really sums up the surge in popularity. If you want to take your Snowflake solution to the next level, consider integrating it with Databricks for more data science and analytics power. And check out this video to see how to set up a quick, free proof of concept.